Uh, today I wanted to share with you my TBR, that means to be read list. I thought it was particularly appropriate. I saw other author tubers were posting it's TBR Tuesday and I was like, hey, that's next on my list anyways of videos to make. So without further ado, I have the pile next to me on the floor and I want to share with you what I'm currently reading, uh, what I intend to read, um, books that I still want to read but I've had a hard time trying to get into, um, and then books that I want to read but are, I find somewhat intimidating. So let's talk about that. So first of all, like I mentioned in the last video, I'm currently reading The Trader's Game by Jennifer A. Nielsen. Um, last time I talked I was only about like that far in. But now I'm this far in, here, for comparison, I made it that far through the book, and yes, I do use the book jacket as bookmarks. I'll use anything as a bookmark, really. I mean, just depends on what's around me. Um, so, yeah, that's how far I've gotten, and I actually want to talk about that at the end of the video, how long it takes me to read books, and because I, I mentioned before, I am a slow reader. So yeah, I'll be talking about that as well. So far, I've loved this book. Um, I know that Jennifer Nielsen's books tend to have twists. And so I'm trying to find the twist before it happens. You would think as a writer, I'd be good at that. But like, so far, I've only caught one out of three of her books that I've read all the way through. I've only caught one twist. Um, so I think, I think I know the twist with this one, if there is one. I expect there's one, but I'm not sure yet. We shall see. Um, yeah, really enjoying it. I really want Kestra to be able to, that's the main protagonist is Kestra. I want her to figure out what's the best and right thing to do and to do it. And uh, she's having a hard time knowing what sides to take and who to trust and who to believe and all of that and uh, the romantic tension is fantastic and the plot tension is fantastic so yeah I'm really enjoying this one so that's gonna go right back there since that's the one I'm currently reading my next one on my or I should say my first one on my to be read list is actually a trilogy and my husband got this for me he said I would really like it and he's very good at knowing what I like Miss Bourne. Uh, this is by Brandon Sanderson. I'm looking forward to reading this. We got the box set. Um, so that should keep me nice and busy for a while. I haven't even read the back of the box. So I don't know what it's about. I kind of just want to jump into it and not expect anything because I trust my husband's opinion. And out of the Brandon Sanderson books that he has suggested to me before, I've really enjoyed them. I've read Elantris and Warbreaker and it was funny because he hasn't actually read Warbreaker but he was like you'll like this from what I've heard about it and I, I loved it. So yeah looking forward to reading this and um, yep Mistborn Trilogy. It's got Wells of Ascension, the Hero of Ages. I think it's in the right order. The next one on my to be read list is this and it's a trilogy in one book. Um, I like complete sets so I really like when books have a complete set within them. Um, I do find this book somewhat intimidating because the pages are very long and the font is very small. Um, and again, I'm going to get into that. I actually want to talk about being intimidated by books and why it's okay. Um, oh yeah, this is Mercedes Lackey, The Complete Arrows Trilogy. I bought this one. Uh, my husband and I had gone to Barnes & Noble. Um, I've had this for a while. I should have read it by now. Um, I got this one because I couldn't find anything that I'd heard of that I wanted to read, but I wanted to get new books. We, someone had given us a gift card or something, 
and Barnes and Noble's really far, so we only wanted to make one trip. So yeah, I decided to go with this because it looks interesting and um, she can telepathy speak with telepathically. Oh my gosh, I can't. She can telepathically speak with her horse, which I think is really cool because like wouldn't we all love to talk to animals? So yeah, gonna read that. Looking forward to that one. The next book was given to me by a friend. Uh, this friend and I loved to talk about the, the BBC show called The Midwife, which was on Netflix at the time. It's been taken off and I read the book series that that TV series is based off of, which is Jennifer Wirth's Call the Midwife trilogy. Um, and then this is, I don't think this one is a true story though, which is why I haven't read it yet. Um, but this is Secrets of the Midwives. And so because I like other things in the same genre, such as the TV show, um, my hope is that I'll like this. Again, it was recommended by a friend and it, it was a present from that friend. And so I'll, I'll get to it. I've started it before, but compared to the actual real life biography of Jennifer Worth, it wasn't holding as much weight, I think, as I wanted it to. I do, I do still want to read it and I am looking forward to it. Okay, let's talk about some books that I have tried to read and could not get into. So let's start with this one, The Little White Horse. So I've had this book since I was early teens and I can't get rid of it because it was a present and I love books and I just want a full library so that when my kids are older they can read whatever they want from the library and don't have to just be stuck to the things I like. Um, anyways, so if I remember right, the reason I couldn't get into this book is because it was so hyper-focused on a certain detail in the first chapter that it just, I was just like, are, are we done talking about your shoes now? Or something I think it I think it was something like that I do and this whole pile that I'm holding of books that I couldn't get into I do still want to read just to have read them and be able to discuss them because they're ones that other people enjoy the next one on this list actually the next three on this list were part of a children's literature course that I took in college and so I still have them because I bought all the books for the course. Um, the first is um, Terry Pratchett's The Wee Free Men. The next is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valent. Uh, again, this one was hyper focused on it on a random detail in the first chapter, and I just, if it's not plot related, I don't know why the characters are hyper focusing on it. And if it's a physical character trait that they're hyper focused on for like two pages, I lose interest. It don't do that in your books, cause I don't want to read two pages about an imperfection that your main character is worried about. Who cares? I mean, I would say the exception to that would be like Wonder, where his imperfection is the entire plot of the story. So, I mean, there's a time and a place, but in a fantasy book where I'm expecting an adventure, not, not what I'm looking for. Okay, and then with We Free Men, I don't know, it just, 
it hasn't sounded interesting to me, but I do want to read it because everyone says it's so good and Terry Pratchett has a good reputation. So I do intend to read that. Okay, the next one from that class is Chris Riddell's Adeline and the Yellow Cat. And this is a graphic novel. So it should be easy to read in one sitting, but um, I don't remember why I couldn't get into it. I think I just found it ridiculous. But it's supposed to be ridiculous, so that's like not a valid critique, I would say. But, you know, I'll read it eventually. It's in my to be read. Okay, the last one I actually found at a garage sale, and it was a quarter, 25 cents. And I thought, hey, that looks like an interesting book. The description on the back is really interesting. It's a beautiful cover, by the way. And it's got some sort of award. And I was like, looks like a good book for 25 cents. Of course, I'll take it. And um, the reason I've had a hard time getting into this, it is The Last Waltz um, by Gigi Vandegrift. The reason I've had a hard time getting into this one, but again, I still want to read it, is because the main protagonist is a girl who was insulted that someone thought she looked intelligent. And I really value intelligence. So I don't know why you would be insulted that someone thinks you look intelligent. I know it's like supposed to be part of the time that she lives in, which I believe, yeah, is like pre-World War One, but like right before because it takes place in Vienna. Um, and I think it actually will go into World War One, in like that will enter the plot. Um, but yeah, I didn't like that she was insulted that someone thought she could be potentially intelligent. That just, that was a big turn off. I'm like, okay, I can't really respect that about a protagonist. Sorry. I want to talk about books I want to read, but that I'm intimidated by. As a teacher and as a writer, you would say, what, why are you intimidated by books? That doesn't make sense. You love books. You collect books. You have so many bookshelves in your home. Well, you wouldn't say that because I haven't given you the bookshelf tour yet, but I'm going to eventually. Anyways, um, I really want to read, and I didn't grab all of them because they're huge. Um, I really want to read The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. And when I was dating my husband, he was reading this series. And it sounded so interesting because we would talk about books all the time. And of course we did because we both write and we both read and we both love stories and discussing plot ideas and stuff but it is dense it is so dense and I am such a slow reader uh, for example this book that I am reading to read uh, let's see where did I start yesterday to read about that much took me five and a half closer to six hours of sitting down, reading, and doing nothing else. Now, during this COVID-19, social distance, quarantine, whatever thing, however you want to call it, coronavirus stuff, I have time to do that finally, which is awesome. I'm so glad I have time, but I don't always have time. In fact, when I was reading Keeper by Kim Chance, I usually read it once a day in five minute spurts, which meant it took me days to get through a single chapter. And this book is not dense. You can see about how many words on a page. I would say three paragraphs, 10 lines of dialogue max. And it takes me a long time to read even that. So something like this, Usually, when we're not locked up and stuff, I mean, we're not locked up, I can sit on my porch. In fact, I read most of that on my porch yesterday. 
Um, if I was going to read this in five minute spurts, I would not finish a page. It will take me longer than five minutes to read one of these pages just because of the way that my eyes track across a page and that's due to my ocular motor dysfunction which is why this intimidates me and the rest of the books in the series and I really want to know because all my friends talk about it and it's so frustrating because I want to know what the story is really badly but I'm a slow reader and this is terrifyingly intimidating because that would mean months and months of dedication to a single story. Same with, same thing with this book where it's actually three books but it's still pretty dense. Now from a teaching perspective usually in our literacy classes we're told to watch out for slow readers because they are less likely to have high comprehension. Now, my words per minute is low, but my comprehension of what I'm reading is actually very high, which is kind of a fluke, it doesn't always happen, but I find that because I'm, I've slowed down so much, I actually catch more details than someone who reads very quickly. And I'm not just talking about people who skim the page like a textbook. That's a completely different reading strategy. I mean, people reading for enjoyment, they'll miss little details that I tend to catch because it takes my brain longer to process the words that are saying the details. Um, love how the lighting's changing as the clouds move. <laughs> so, as a teacher, I can understand and sympathize with children who are not into reading because it's a commitment for them just like those bigger books will be for me when I eventually get to them. Um, I want to listen to them on audiobook but I haven't found them at my library yet because they're always checked out in audiobook form. I know I could get Audible or Chirp or one of those other subscription audiobook things but they're not necessarily going to have the specific books I'm looking for and I'm just not ready to pay that subscription fee every month yet. I'll get to that point eventually when I'm not just a part-time teacher because I mean like if teaching is low on the totem pole, part-time teaching is even lower as far as income. But you know, I'll get there. Anyways, that's my TBR bookshelf tour coming up next time. So look forward to that. Um, thank you for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're enjoying, that's frustrating. If you're enjoying my new YouTube studio, please let me know in the comments. Let me know what's on your to be read list. And if you have any good reviews about any of the books I've shared, even the ones I couldn't get into, actually, especially the ones I couldn't get into. If you have good reviews about them, please let me know so that I can find something to look forward to in those stories when I do get to them. Thank you so much. Bye. Oh, I'm out of breath. Why am I out of breath? Hang on. Hey, so I recorded that video earlier today and then I've been reading since then. And I just want to say I did not guess the twist like I thought I had. That's all. Bye.